These pictures are of the utility table that I just finished construction on. I needed a table with particular dimensions so that I could place a stereo receiver on the pre-existing printer table but still have a place for the printer to go. You'll find plenty of videos on the web about how to build your own table. However, I don't have woodworking tools and I didn't want to purchase such to solve an isolated problem. In this video, I'll show the ultra simplicity of my table's construction that yielded me the dimensions I needed. Those dimensions allowed my coveted but old stereo receiver to have the cooling space that it needed while allowing my printer to be moved to just above it. All the material which the table was constructed from was purchased at Lowe's Hardware for less than $60. That's in the first week of September 2014. I didn't lathe those wooden legs. Those four table legs were purchased that way and were a, a la carte purchase, purchased individually, or priced individually, I should say. <clears throat> that does represent the majority of the cost for the material in the table's construction. So to get by without adding additional costs in terms of expensive wood cutting tools, Lowe's Hardware nicely cut my tabletop from wood that I picked there to my custom dimensions. So then the minor tasks that remained were some sanding, figuring out a way to cleanly mount the table legs, and spray painting the table. All was done leisurely in a weekend amongst other activities around the house. In fact, post-editing to create this video took more time than any effort that I put into the table's construction. Okay, <clears throat> the way I marked the center of the holes is uh, I used a square that I had in my left hand here and I moved uh, the 45 degree angle here right up to the edge uh, corner of the piece and then I mark uh, this point and uh, so <clears throat> then I knew exactly how far to go from that point to the center the way I got that was I did the same thing on these uh, pre-drilled. Okay, just take the uh, uh, square and put it on this uh, leg exactly the same way and measure the distance from say like uh, this corner here that you're looking at to the center. Once you know exactly what that distance is, it's a 45 degree angle, the circle's right in the center, you'll nail it. The circle uh, drill bit to um, sink in a uh, cylindrical hole, uh, you can see that the uh, depth is just about right there at the uh, you know, top of the little circle, circular part. In other words, when you insert it back in there, then you'll see uh, about what the depth is. So it's a little bit deeper uh, than just the top part of those uh, teeth that protrude out from the, the bit. Uh, two, two black teeth there. So a little hard holding the camera and uh, positioning this at the same time. Uh, one thing that I will note is that when you start the hole, the bit is going to want to walk. And one of the points that I'll make is that if, the, if you're spinning the drill fast and you really have good hold on it, almost like a body hold on it, not just you know your arm stuck way out in front of you, get your body up close to it so you can use your body to you know, stabilize and then go down on the hole. But the faster the bit is spinning, the quicker you're going to uh, lose that walk. However, if you get a little on an edge or whatever, it also means that the power uh, can really, you know, send the, send the bit off to the side pretty quick. So you really got to have, you know, a, a, enough of a body hold on it and be really sure to uh, go. But if you're trying to spin the bit too slow, it's going to walk on you and you're going to mar up. Now, it's not that bad if you mar this up because it's going to be underneath the leg anyway. And we're going to use uh, some liquid steel, basically epoxy that's got steel uh, little bits 
ground up in it really fine. Okay, this is the epoxy. I'm pretty sure it's going to do the job. So you've got to mix it. It's half and half. And uh, as you can see, it's quick setting steel reinforced epoxy. So it's got you know steel ground up into fine powder, basically, or grits. And uh, so you mix this stuff together. It's more than just epoxy. It's epoxy that's got you know steel bits all through it, which uh, well, they say you know world strongest bond. Uh, the grip into the hull is going to be very stout hex nut head uh, being down inside that epoxy. When that epoxy dries, I'm going to have a pretty solid. Uh, these bolts that I got at Lowe's hardware uh, were you know, a little bit longer than uh, the hull that is pre-sunk in these uh, wood legs. So it just meant that you know I had to uh, you know, use an open-ended adjustable wrench to, you know, kind of just put a little muscle into cranking them in, no big deal. Just, you know, be aware that uh, if you're using these same prefabricated uh, legs here, uh, you know, have a pretty decent lathe uh, job done on them. The hole that uh, comes in them isn't deep enough. I suppose what you could do is sink your drill in there and just, you know, drill it down a little bit deeper certainly wouldn't hurt anything. You got a good guide there. So just another note on the uh, JB Weld uh, epoxy. Uh, the top of it you gotta you know penetrate with something to get it open basically. It's just to keep it sealed. So I'm gonna use a punch and the point to uh, that I'll make here is with this stuff is you want to get it off of this you know if you want to keep the punch and it's valuable to you whatever you get this stuff on and you want to keep it get it off of there quick keep a rag i already got my rag here well there's my two little uh, puddles and i'm about to mix it i'll show you one once i get it mixed there's uh it's on the end of my block here there's where i got it mixed you can tell it turns pretty black the, the gray mixes into the black and turns into still yet a, a fairly dark black grayish black I'd say. Just to show you this uh, JB Weld epoxy it's been about oh maybe eight to nine minutes uh, since ten minutes I guess since uh, you know this was still uh, or it was mixed maximum maybe 12 13 minutes but you can see here I mean this stuff is solid <laughs> here it is you know 13 minutes later and I mean it's 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 so strong it's it's hard. I mean, get this stick off here is impossible. I mean, I'll, you'd have to break this little Starbucks uh, coffee stirrer to get it off of there now. So, you know, give it an hour, and uh, you're, you know, you're right up there. I mean, probably, you know, to hit its peak, it's probably 24 hours, but it's certainly usable inside of, you know, an hour and a half, two hours. I mean, you can start using that table in you know two hours time there you have it uh now it's, it needs to be you know all the sawdust or where i sanded it i sanded it pretty good beforehand but uh, the legs are on it there the jb weld is uh, doing its job they're probably getting pretty strong but i'm going to let them sit a little bit longer it's been about you know 20 minutes or so and uh before i carry it out there to paint it i'm going to let it sit for about 45 minutes and uh, go in the house get myself something cool to drink and uh but there you go i mean you know nice little table there work table printer table whatever you want uh right to exact dimensions and uh pretty much no fuss a fun little project actually you know something to do with your time on the weekend